All right, I'm going to get started in introducing our amazing guest today because I'm very excited to pass the mic over to her. I know there's some amazing content here for all of you on really creating engaging travel videos that she's done so well. So this is your first webinar with us. My name is Sam. I have the pleasure of getting to host and moderate this amazing webinar series. We've been doing this now for four or five months. They've all been recorded and are up in our YouTube channel. So definitely take a look at those if this is your first time joining us. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many amazing experts who come in here and really teach us something that they know best. And that's definitely what you're gonna get today. So on that note, I am very excited to get to introduce today's guest, which is Akanksha Manga, who is a full-time solo traveler with a community of over 600,000 people following her journey. She quit her job in finance just over two years ago to pursue travel content creation full-time. She's visited more than 20 countries and counting and is always on the lookout for offbeat destinations and those more challenging adventures. And her goal is to really motivate more women to break the invisible barriers around them and get out and see the world. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful host. I'm <laughs> super excited to be here. And um, yeah, I'm super excited to be taking this webinar, something I've been meaning to do to share my own learnings from the past two years and get it out there because I know there's so many people who are here with great stories to tell. And um, I just can't wait to see everyone um, take something to learn from this workshop and then put it in action. And then I can see a lot of great content out there. So I think it's a win-win for everyone. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. It's a privilege that we get to be one of the first places. I know you've been sharing valuable content basically the entire time, but one of the first times you're really putting it all together in a webinar, at least in this way. So thank you. We've also saved some time at the end for Q&A. You'll see there's a chat box throughout. And there's a separate, separate box for questions there as we go through and I'll come back at the end and we'll have a bit of a fireside chat. So if you are new here, if you are new here, this webinar series is hosted by Safety Wing. And if you're not familiar with Safety Wing, we have a vision of building a global social safety net for remote workers and nomads. I'm guessing if you are on this call, you are someone who is looking to travel more, maybe is already traveling and working. And so Safety Wing is creating a suite of products with all of us in mind. And our most popular product is Nomad Insurance, which protects you with affordable health and medical coverage anytime you're working outside of your home country. And so you'll learn a little bit more about that product later on, but it's one of our fastest growing products. We have a community of hundreds of thousands of global customers. And it's just the first of many products that we're really creating to support us in our of becoming more nomadic and really wanting to create a home country on the internet for everyone. So that's a little bit about Safety Wing. Of course, we have this amazing guest today. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And while you're getting yours up, Akanksha, let's see the results of this poll. Okay, pretty good mix. You're muted, there you go. So it looks like you have a mix of people in terms of what they think is the best way to build your audience. Biggest split between showcasing your personality through telling as well as providing the formative videos that are high value. So I'm curious to, to hear what you think. I know that's just loading right now. Yep, just give me a second. I'm just getting my screen up. Do you see my screen now? Sure do, that looks great. Awesome. Um, so the poll was obviously something that uh, I, there is a slightly right and wrong answer, I would say. So while I personally believe that it's great that you can, um, you know, create viral videos, and that's a that's a good way to reach a large audience. Uh, but the best way to really get your message out there is let your 
personality shine through because that's really how you can get your messaging across and um you know reach people the right way um so yeah i think that was the answer at least that i'd go with um but let's get started and get into the presentation the webinar um sam do i have a go ahead should i start you got it everything looks great awesome awesome perfect so hello everyone. I think uh, Sam introduced me very well. You all, I think most of you already probably know me from my Instagram. Uh, I've been doing this for two years now, creating travel videos and uh, hopefully giving you guys all the information. Um, so let me take you through how it all started for me, right? So I started back in college, actually, that was when I put out my first ever post, which was actually in 2020, um, which is after that I stopped and I did like finance in college. So something completely different from what I'm doing right now. Uh, but I personally believe that it did help me a lot because, you know, I learned how to work in the space of business, work in the space of finance. And um, post college, I basically started working as an analyst at Bain and & Company. And I personally feel that those two years of working there really taught me a lot. And I wouldn't really trade that experience that I had in the corporate world for anything. So this isn't a regular, you know, I hated my corporate job kind of story and I wanted to get out of it. I did uh, truly appreciate and value the learnings I got from there because I personally felt that it allowed me um, a safe space to explore the like, you know, area of content creation. Because what ends up happening is you don't really know whether you'd really enjoy this career because it does have its own up and ups and downs and also a lot of challenges um but what I personally felt at that time was that it gave me that space to explore that, which I did. And I realized that, okay, that this is exactly where my true calling lies, which is being more creative, passionate towards travel and being able to travel more. Um, thankfully, uh, my job was remote, which allowed me to take those vacations and work out of different places and start creating content on the side. So I don't know how many of you guys have been following me uh, from what year. You can probably put that down in the question uh, in the chat box so that I also know uh, but you probably know me as someone who started out with giving tips on uh, working as a digital nomad which is exactly what I used to do and uh, then I started working at LinkedIn as a creator manager and that was also a move that I personally feel was very strategic because I wanted to work in social media and not at you know a company that I was working at which was completely different private equity finance and working in social media gave me a lot of insights about the entire industry, um, how there are different creators, let's say, you know, bigger creators in India, like Ankur Variku and all of them, how they're building their brand, their business. And that entire, I took those insights and then kind of after two and a half or more than two years of working, quit my job last year in June and started doing this full time. Um, I have to say that the, I get this question a lot and I'm sure I would have eventually gotten this question in the end. So I'll point it out that this wasn't a reckless, rash decision, uh, which I made overnight. It was a decision wherein um, as a creator, you have your own business. I checked that, you know, I have my quarterly earnings managed and only then did I take the decision to quit my job. It wasn't something that I did out of um, just being, you know, rash about it, because obviously both the jobs that I did were great. And then I wanted to move on to something where I could fully focus my energies on one thing and see how it grows, you know, so I quit my job in June 2022, I promised myself that I will give myself one year and see what happens um, in the next one year. And if it doesn't work out, I'll try to apply for jobs again and hopefully get something. Um, so when I left LinkedIn in June, 2022, I had an, a community only on one space, which was Instagram. And um, that community was around 250,000 people. And now around less than one year later, this is how it's going. Um, I've built my community across different platforms, um, given a TEDx talk, traveled to so many countries, 
And this is the power of also putting your mind and heart and dedicating everything that you have towards one goal um, and, you know, letting your story shine through, which is what why the first poll existed in the first place, that it wasn't about following trends or um, just giving information, but sharing my story with everyone day in and day out and also experimenting using different platforms. It's very important to spread out, spread yourself across different platforms because putting your eggs in one basket is never a good idea. Um, so I started experimenting with long form content on YouTube, something I struggled with, but I'm trying to get more and more consistent. I started with Twitter, with LinkedIn, which is also a platform wherein people come up to me and say that, oh, they follow me on only on LinkedIn because you never know where your audience is, you know, because there are a lot of people who don't really use Instagram, might just use YouTube. Everyone has that app or might just use LinkedIn. So having your presence across different platforms is so important. And the best thing that you can do is repurpose. Like the, the beauty of repurposing is amazing. Just take content that you've created and show it or put it across in different ways. So that's kind of what I do across my different platforms. However, I always keep it as a mix. So a couple of new pieces, a couple of old pieces, but always providing value, right? So this is how it's going now. And um, let's get started, like the, the meat of the, the webinar. So first, I want to talk about the most important thing of being a most critical and most important part of being a creator, right? And that is building a strong audience, which is 462 of you who are here with me today, um, spending one hour hearing me out. Um, so building a strong audience is very important because I am nothing without the audience that, that invests their time in watching my videos. And how do you build that community, right? I don't personally see it as followers. I think it's very important to think about every person who's a part of your community, like everyone's a person and not a number that you can keep chasing. And that's the only way you're able to provide value, in my opinion, because you put yourself in their shoes and think, okay, if I watch this video or if I watch this piece of content, will it add value to my life or is it going to pull me down? And that's how I personally feel is the best way to build a stronger audience because only when you put out a positive message do you get a positive reaction in return, right? Um, and also allows, it also gives you the space to make errors sometime as well, you know, like it's, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. So when you start your journey, you might make an error. You might accidentally someday not research your facts properly, put out something that's the only issue with the internet, right? But if you have a nice, strong, loving community, they will give you the space to grow. And I personally felt that over the past two years. Um, another thing that I would like to point out over here is, again, like I said, having that personal touch with your audience is really, really important. Um, so not having a page, which is where the third question answer of the poll comes, which is like, you know, where you just throw out information without having yourself come on um, or come online and show your personality, who you are, what do you stand for? Um, I was at NAS Summit recently and Nasser said something that really stuck with me, that a creator without an opinion is not a creator. You know, you need to have that out there and that's kind of how you start building a community. So we're going to dive deeper into how step by step you can take this and what's the secret sauce behind it to building a stronger community because that's how you would be able to take this as a longer career than looking at it short term, which is like next one year or next two years. So it's a three ingredient recipe, right? Passion, relatability, and value. So when you're passionate about something, that's the only way you can succeed, in my opinion, as a creator, um, because that's the only way people know that what you're saying or what you're doing um, is legit. Uh, passion comes is passion brings out the right knowledge as well. So only if you're passionate about something, do you have the ability to show up day in and day out, right? I have to come up, come and make videos every single day. I post almost 20 times a month or 25 times a month. And every single video takes almost four hours to edit, 
five hours or three hours to shoot and get everything together and the mental space. So if you are passionate about something, that's the only way you can show up for this job every single day, which is why passionate, being passionate is a very important ingredient to this entire recipe, right? And I would also say that um, passion really comes through. And if you're passionate about something, that's the only way you can call out people who are passionate about your message, which is why I see people who love to travel. And when I meet them, I can feel that. So that's the only way I've been able to attract them to become a part of my community. So pick a topic. This is for anyone, not even people who just travel, but even within traveling, if you're not passionate about traveling solo or maybe traveling on a budget, don't create that content. Create content on what you are passionate about. And secondly, have the relatability aspect in it. So um, there are a lot of people out there who create content also just like I said, I emphasized a lot on telling your story, showing your personality, but also thinking about what would be relatable to your audience, right? So every single time I create a piece of content, I think about the fact how would this fit into a, like a lot of people's lives, not just one person, but like 10,000 people, right? That's how you need to start thinking. How relatable is the content? So, which is why if you think of creators who um, maybe create content on finance or um, creators who create comical content, like funny content, it's very, very relatable. You share it with me. I share it with my brother. I share it with my mom. That's kind of how the entire loop works. So, relatability is a very strong part of the recipe. And lastly, it's value. I can't emphasize on this enough. Um, someone recently said that you should be here to build an audience that comes to social media to seek value for their time and not to kill their time because that's the audience that stays. So seek um, and seek out an audience that's seeking value for their time. And the only way you can get that kind of an audience is if you are creating valuable content. If you are giving information, um, if you are helping someone learn, grow in whatever field it may be. So it could be absolutely any topic that you're creating content on, but think about how this might be um, adding value to their lives in terms of are they learning? Are they growing? Um, is, this, is this something new that hasn't been spoken about? So adding value is super, super important. And I think that creates the perfect mix uh, for building a stronger audience. Then um, I would love to know from you guys, because this is something that I personally feel is very, very important to grow as a creator in the first few months. Um, so tell me how many I'm going to open the chat box and see how many of you say, what do you think matters? Quality versus quantity. Um, let's say, yeah, okay. Wow. Lots of answers. Lots of you are saying a mix, both for sure. Quantity, quality. Okay. I'm definitely seeing more quality for sure. I like it. Someone's got it right. So Mridul, I think, um, has basically stolen the line that I was going to say. Um, so yeah, so you know when, oops, um, I'm just trying to close this out. Yeah, so you know, uh, when you start as a creator, I personally felt that quality is what matters the most. Uh, because that's what we're told in general. Um, that obviously whatever you're doing has to be the best quality. And that's the kind of pressure that you put on yourself as well, because think about the creators that you follow. You know, I personally say, for example, um, Komal Pandey creates beautiful fashion content. So she's someone that, that I follow and look up look up to or um, someone like Drew Binsky in the travel space or uh, Yes Theory, they create amazing content. And that's the benchmark that we set for ourselves when we start that because those are the people who've inspired us. So it's but natural for us to set them as our benchmark. But that's not how social media works, right? Um, you grow with experience, you grow with making errors, trying new things out, experimenting with what kind of content you like in the first place, because you may like watching that kind of content, but you might not actually like making it. And that only comes if you try and you put out imperfect content, which is why quantity matters a lot in the beginning. And I personally feel that that is kind of where my journey also took off. Um, initially, 
uh, like I said, I started posting for the first time ever when I was in my final year of university. But um, there was this weird pressure because I started after seeing these amazing creators, travel creators like Eva Zubek, Yes Theory, uh, Drew Binsky, and they were creating some beautiful videos. And I thought, you know what, I also want to tell my story the same way. And I, when I couldn't see the results uh, matching up to theirs, I felt like, mm, I don't think I can keep up with this posting. And it was just, you know, once a week or once in three weeks. And that's not how you build consistency. So you have to understand that all of these apps, be it YouTube, Instagram, no matter what you say, they do man, they do reward consistency, right? By the end of the day, you are posting. Am I stuck? Sorry. Can everyone still hear me? I froze yeah. on a second you're okay. still good okay awesome so um yeah so like i was saying so i think focusing on quantity in the beginning putting out as much content as you can uh even if say let's say you divide if i'll give you super practical actionable tip you have seven days in a week you're starting out you're very new to this you don't know how to edit a video try to start at least recording yourself putting out your message, no matter what it is, if you're creating, reviewing a tech gadget, just review a tech gadget, the same way you would talk to maybe your close friend, or you know how you put stories on Instagram for your friends or Snapchat, same way, just have those couple of reels getting started or videos for YouTube getting started and focus on one or two videos a week, which are going to be that high quality video for you, you know? So invest time in those two videos, but let the rest of the, let's say three videos, if you're posting five times a week, be just normal, casual. Don't focus on the quantity. Let the quality, let the, don't focus on quality, let the quantity go higher. And you'll see the results eventually because you'll see that you're getting better with each video. It's just practice makes you better. It's a very cliched line, but it stands true here as well. And the reason why I spoke about this and made a separate slide about this is because this is so, so important and it deters so many people from even getting started. So today, right after this class webinar, um, I would love that all of you pick up your phone and just make a video talking to the camera. It doesn't matter if you know, you don't edit it on any app. If you want to take in short the simplest app that you can download and put a title over it, just text or use Canva, which is what this presentation is made on. Put the title over it and just upload it. And even if you don't want to show it to the world, just upload it. And you are your worst critic, right? So keep doing that and build that habit and you will see results eventually. And then as you grow as a creator, you start focusing more on quality, which is what I do now. Like I have a benchmark for myself now that, you know, I need to put out a certain video of certain quality. And that is something that I have set for myself, which is very important to me. And because, and that's bound to happen because that's how you grow. Right. So that's the entire debate on quality versus Quantity versus quality. And I would always say that quantity in the beginning should be your main focus. And then you start, as you start moving on in your trajectory, you can start focusing more on quality while both of them remain on the priority list, just the P1 and P2 interchange. Next up is what should your content do? Like what are the feelings um, that it should inspire or what what is the end result of your uh, one video right so it should either inspire educate entertain or do all of them at once now you can basically pick which is whether what what exactly do you want your content to do out of them so let's say an inspirational video of mine would be me sharing my journey about um you know starting off uh, from a background where I was working full time, which is very relatable to everyone. And then quitting my job, becoming a content creator, working my ass off, growing. That is an inspirational piece of content. It helps people to connect with you, to connect with your journey. So that is one style of creating content. Now, that doesn't need to always be this sort of a storyline. Inspirational content can also work out for finance creators who talk about how they made their wealth grow. Right. So by the end of the day, inspirational content is anything which 
allows your audience, allows your community for, to strive for something better, better according to them, or to strive for like the next goal, basically. So for example, I put out a video at the end of the year and I do this every single year where I make a transition, which is across every single country that I've been to throughout that year. And um, that is an inspirational form of content. You know, it's simple, it's easy. It doesn't educate you at all. It entertains you and it inspires you. Next up is educational content. I don't think I need to explain that at all. Uh, we all know what and a content that can like what a piece of content that educates you does um it basically provides the right knowledge it provides the in, right information and lastly is entertaining content by the end of the day we have to realize that platforms like instagram are used by a lot of people who come there to scroll to get their mind off uh, work um, think about when do you scroll on Instagram or YouTube, right? It's always in your free time when you're having lunch, uh, when you're sitting in office and you're free or right before you go to bed, even though I don't suggest that, or uh, maybe sometime in the evening as you're just cooling off. That's when we use social media. So we don't want to see content that's extremely heavy, that consumes a lot of our mind space, which is of course something that you can create, but you you have to know that you're doing that for a very small niche then. Most of the people come to you know social media to just decompress. So making that con content entertaining is always necessary. And if you'd see any of my videos, the reason why I'm always screaming at the camera and jumping in and coming out is to entertain. It's to make someone smile, to make someone just be like, okay, what, what is she on about? But not in a serious way, which is why even when you educate, try to entertain, try to make it interesting. Um, this is not uh, uh, our boring math teacher from school, but this is a content creator on social media. So think about how you can mix these elements and every single time you put out that video, ask yourself, what is the purpose put out the most existential question and throw it on your content. What is the purpose of my video? Is it inspiring, educating, or entertaining? Is it doing all three? That's definitely going to be a hit. But even if it's doing one of them, that's great, right? Next, how do you really know what your audience wants? Now you kind of know what's the secret to creating, like what's the recipe of a great piece of con content, right? But what does your audience really want here? So I personally feel like this was very important because I have literally created all of my content bases this. Number one is conducting Q and A's. You see that the app in itself provides you with a lot of tools to communicate with your audience. So do that, communicate with your community, um, ask them questions, um, have, use the AMAs. So many times when I do and ask me a question, it's always about learning what my audience wants to know. So, and then creating content based off that, because that is a sure shot guarantee, right? You know, people want this and you make it. So knowing that is very important. Paying attention to comments. Now, as you can see, um, itinerary tips. This is exactly the reason why I make these, because I know that this is what everyone wants to see. So I know exactly what my audience is asking for, and I'm able to bring that out, right? And if you have a smaller audience, what did I do when I had like 40 people following me and two comments, one was from my mom and one was from my grandmother. Um, I basically stopped other big creators and I saw their comments and what are people commenting out there? What do, what does the audience want? The audience that I want to hear me out, what do they want to hear? Same thing. You can also use Quora. That's an amazing platform. Just write travel questions, write. I mean, that's for my genre. If you're working in another genre, of course, that's up to you. Uh, and um, see what questions come up and you can see how many votes people have on each question and that's super helpful. And lastly, always take feedback from your audience as to how you're doing. That's also a great way to understand if, you know, there is um, a gap between what you're creating and what you're communicating. Because there are a lot of times when you might be creating things thinking that the messaging you're getting out is exactly what your audience wants to see. But what you might be communicating is not that. Right? This is so, how I back for a one month long. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant by screaming at the camera. But um, I hate spending money. I did not realize that all of them. Yeah. Yeah. It almost got scammed. Yeah. 
So <laughs> how does a reel go viral, right? Um, now, getting into this. So I would love to know, firstly, how many of you think that there is absolutely no way, no metric um, that you can rank basically to make a reel go viral, like that social media, because I heard, I see a lot of these posts and I also get a lot of um, comments from people saying that my page has just been shadow banned and uh, people aren't able to watch my content. Instagram is pulling me down. What do you think about this? Just quickly, if you can write in a couple of answers, do you really think that there is a way to guarantee viral content more or less? I would, I would love to see um, your answers there. If you're just a yes, no, if you feel like there's a specific metric that you think does help that, what have you seen so far? Just put it in the comments. Uh, mm -hmm. Trending audio, first six seconds of the reel, consistent posting. You believe it can go viral anytime, blaming algorithm, bringing in a celebrity. It depends on interaction, like them from followers. Okay, so I trial and error, nothing guaranteed. So I see everyone's answers and I kind of get a gist of what everyone is saying because this is exactly the thoughts that I had when I started as well. But now after creating over 800 videos or posts over time, I've kind of realized that there is a way to, I wouldn't say guarantee your content going viral, but I know when a piece of content of mine is going to do well. There are times when it just, you know, you can see the numbers now. Instagram's done a great thing with showing the shares, the number of shares. You can see what's out there. So I know when a piece of content is going to work well and something that's going to not work insanely well. But I still put both out. Like I said, it's not about just high quality, but also quantity. And um, I know that there are certain videos that might not be shared, saved, uh, or, you know, like com get commented by, but I know that it will reach the right set of fewer people who I want to reach. So that's a different thing. But let's talk about the metrics in order of their importance um, on virality, right? So the biggest thing that any social media platform ranks in terms of a metric is the shareability of the video. And let's just be super logical about it from a business standpoint, right? By the end of the day, you're creating content on a platform like Instagram or YouTube. And um, that is not an office. It's a, it's a company um, that um, has a share price, that has employees and the way they become bigger is if content is spread wider there are more users coming in and how do more users come into a content piece like into a onto a platform if it's shared more often right like say for example my mom wasn't on instagram one of my best friends wasn't on instagram the only reason they joined is because they got bombarded by messages again and again saying that oh you have you watched this have you watched that and that is where shareability comes in which is why shareability is definitely the most important metric. So if I have any of my videos, which has gone, which have gone like insanely viral, it, they also have the maximum number of shares. There's like a direct correlation more or less with the shares and the virality of the video, right? So how do you make your content shareable? It's quite simple. Um, number one is that you try to think about how relatable this piece of content is. So this works especially well for people who create content in the space of comedy, uh, because, you know, you automatically find that very relatable and you want to share it around with people. Secondly, say, for example, um, this reel was By a huge airline. Keep watching so that you don't have to go through the same. So this was uh, basically a video of mine, which I made on getting scammed almost by a huge airline. And now tell me, this is the point basically, which I personally feel makes a huge difference as well, even though you might not pay attention to it, which is this. So the next person who tried to come down and find out, for sure. Thank you so much. Share this with your friends and family so that none of you get scammed and know your rights before these big companies take advantage of you. I recently which is adding a call to action at the end of your video. What do you want the people to do with your video? If, this was one place where I wanted people to know more 
and to be educated about their rights and to know that you know these things can happen even though they seem so bizarre so share it and that's exactly what i said i didn't say save this video because it's going to do you no good by saving this reel on your phone it's about sharing getting the word out so saying that out loud really really helps which is why you need to start and end your video with a relatable start and a relatable ending and tell people to put that message out there so say that share the video and that really helps next is saving a uh, how saveable is your reel now saveable reels are basically reels that are more for your own use so for example if i give um this was basically how to pack um your entire you know a two month long trip long only using my carry on bag so this is basically educating someone as to how you know you can carry a two months worth luggage in one carry on bag and that is something you might save because you know when you go on your next trip you want might want to use it so i know that when i'm creating content say for example an itinerary how many people would end up sharing that itinerary with each other maybe if let's say someone's going to the philippines they'll max to max share that with their best friend with their boyfriend girlfriend husband wife or maybe you know no one if they're going alone so they'll save it so that's where the entire story ends so i know that some reels are going to be saved more than shared more and that is also a great metric that you can think about and also add the cta in the end again say that save this reel for your next trip and add it at the top of the caption that's super important when you're posting your reel adding the cta at the top of the caption is very very important next is average watch time that is something that i don't know how many of you guys know but when you scroll into your insights of a reel you can actually see the average amount of time someone has watched your video for and i would say 615 to 17 seconds is the sweet spot after which mostly people will end up watching your entire video if it's a 1 minute plus long video or a 1 minute video so thinking about firstly how to hook keep your audience hooked for the first 3 seconds that's done so you've got 3 seconds out of your way out of 15 seconds how do you keep them hooked for the next 12 seconds think about that so increasing your average watch time is very important and lastly it's engaging your audience right so now if you see this very quick very short i don't even know how long this is it's an 8.3 second video just see this and it got like over a million and a half views <laughs> and the only reason this video has worked out so well is it's because it's got 841 unique comments which is 841 unique like one in like 841 people have commented tagging other people just because i put this in the box out there and you'd be surprised to know that when i first uploaded this video which was by accident i didn't put this box and the comments that i was getting were more about like oh nice outfits or oh beautiful singapore is amazing and then i realized there was an error with the video so i deleted it and then put it out and while i was putting it out i was like hmm you know what let me add this box on the top and it just completely like in the next 10 minutes the comments were completely different it was people tagging you know their best friend their boyfriend their partner whoever and that was so interesting to me because that one change in just the communication changed everything for the video so thinking about how you can engage your audience is also very very important right and now let's talk about how do you basically edit a video like me what's the secret sauce behind the edit because that is also extremely important in the journey of the entire video right and i personally feel this is the most important skill that i've learned over the years because um, it allows me to tell you my story in the most interesting way possible So number 1 surprisingly i don't know how many of you guys would have thought that this would be the most important thing over here but it's honestly music um i have realized over time that music is so so important to set the tone right for a video right there's happy there's sad there's epic music now happy music is always the upbeat fast you know you're communicating a message so let's say if i go back to the previous video <laughs> but um, yeah so if you see this video this could have also gone the beats of this audio could also match a more solemn song like a sadder song but i chose this because i'm smiling here i'm you know like super happy so it's very important to set that as the tone and that's why the music is this 
Um, similarly, over here, let's say this is funny, which is why I'm going to the Philippines the most of. Now, this is something where you're just like, you're building up curiosity. So let the video always start with music that's going up. So that's why thinking about the messaging that you have, accordingly choose the music. Now, imagine if I would have put that same song on the video where I created, like I created this video on why traveling solo is tough, yet you want to do it day in and day out. Think about putting that song over there. It would make absolutely no sense and that video would probably tank and that's the reason why music is so so important it sets the mood and the messaging right so having that is super important the one resource that I would recommend to all of you is this app called epidemic it's a great app for um, getting copyright free music uh, to put behind your videos it's paid but and this is not sponsored it's paid but I personally feel that it's a great app that helps me find amazing music then B-rolls. So B-rolls are basically um, in the whole photography, videography world, um, videos that supplement your story. So for example, if I say, I'm walking across the room and I'm really sad um, and you know my dog ran away, I'm going to put the videos accordingly. So maybe I don't even have that shot on my trip. I will come back home and shoot that part of where I'm just like, no, or, you know, I'm walking in a very solemn way. It has to choose, fit the tone and it has to be of good quality. When I say good quality, I don't mean like it needs to be shot on a DSLR. I mean that it shouldn't be this shaky video, especially at the start of the video when you're trying to tell the story. Um, so the good quality footage is a must. Um, keep a fast pace throughout the video. So I've seen a lot of people who use three or four B-rolls and it, it keeps playing across the video. So make cuts according to what you're saying. So I'll play a video after this that would kind of compile everything. So maybe take a second to just see everything that's written on the side, on the slide, keep a fast pace, choose the right B-roll for the right footage. So match everything accordingly. Use bright colors because that works super well on social media. And for clips where you don't have a supporting footage, footage, use stock images or stock footage, right? That's the simplest way to do it. If you don't have um, a picture of maybe um, a product that you're talking about, just Google it and use that stock image for the video. And lastly, adding subtitles. Um, I think, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but most of the videos are watched without any audio at first. So, I mean, I remember when I was at office, uh, I'm guilty. I used to watch a lot of videos while the meeting would be going on and people would be yapping away. I don't know how many of you guys are also watching videos while I'm speaking, but that's something that's really common. So you have to keep that in mind, right? Having subtitles is very important and also from an inclusivity perspective, right? Um, so keeping subtitles very important. Use colors to emphasize on words. I use, I mostly use uh, Premiere Pro or FCP is a great way to have your titles. Even in short, you can edit titles on that. At least having, even if you don't want to keep word to word titles, at least having the main messaging is very important. And the other thing that you can do is giving different sizes to each word so that it stands out. So colors, like don't just travel, focus on experiences. So as you see, experiences becomes bigger. So that's the main word that I'm trying to throw out on you that. Okay, so let's watch this video. This video basically gets everything together from you Steve. You are not on the coolest experience of your life. I'm, I'm going to pause there and I'm going to start the video again so that you guys can hear the music in the background of this video when it starts. You are missing out on the coolest experience of your life. On this boat trip to your bucket list. Last month, I got on a boat with 12 strangers to spend four days exploring the secret and most unique islands in Coron, Philippines, both above and underwater. Firstly, we had the coolest crew taking us around. Arias, who cracked terrible jokes but always made us laugh. Uncle Bob, who was the man of many talents and kept us entertained. And our chef, Warson, who cooked delicious, fresh food. So um, I'm going to stop the video here because this is mostly the entire thing, right? If you see, and if you really break this video down, I have basically compiled different footages, like different videos from across my trip. I don't 
carry a DSLR. I don't do any fancy equipment. I don't even take insanely cinematic videos. All of these are just raw videos that, you know, even when you're traveling to send to mom and dad, you take these videos. And then I've just put them together after coming back home at the end of my trip. It starts with a strong piece of music uh, that's building up curiosity, which is like, mm, da, 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 which is basically building it up. Then I'm telling the story, which is, you know, which is matched with the B-rolls that support that story. So if I'm talking about Karun, it's suddenly showing Karun from a different angle. If I'm talking about Uncle Bob having many talents, it's showing Uncle Bob have many talents, not one. So a lot of times that's what I meant by having fast-paced B-rolls. Don't just use one B-roll, use three B-rolls. If I'm saying many talents, it means at least many is greater than one, right? So having that in that perspective is very important. And lastly, the subtitles, as you can see, a boat was incredible. We had a floating bed and up. So you can see that there is, you know, coloring, there is supersizing. So all of that is super, super important over here to make the video like a successful edit, right? So by the end of the day, you don't need to take cinematic videos. You don't need to get like super fancy with the equipment. All you need to do is get your story out there properly and then figure out how you put that video together, right? With those steps that I mentioned earlier. So uh, Sam, before I get into this section, because it's a heavy one, let's throw out a poll to the audience um, so that everyone can also take a breather and revise everything that we've just spoken about. So there is the poll. What do you guys think? Which editing and post-production tip do you think can make your travel video stand out the most, according to you? Nice. Incorporating storytelling elements to create a narrative flow. I think that is very, very important. Obviously, for the style of videos that I make, that's super important. And honestly, most styles, right? It's it's extremely important. A lot of you guys have, I just wanted to quickly take that uh, about the audio of your video. So now I recently invested in a mic, but I also used to make my videos earlier literally like this. Like just sit like this and speak to your phone in a under your blanket, uh, which is really sad, but that works. It worked until I literally got a mic only last month or last one and a half months. So um, before that, I was just making my videos like this. The mic just makes it more convenient, especially when I'm shooting outdoors. But other than that, you can just make videos like that with your phone. So you don't need any big investments, but your audio is very, very important, right? And um, now would be a great time to get into the main thing, right? Which is how did I monetize my dream life? Like traveling full time to different destinations, um, being able to take this webinar. How did I get here from, you know, starting out on the first day when I was at Bain? So that journey is something that I have to tell you beforehand is not something that's going to make you money instantly. Like, let me be super clear. When you start, obviously, you don't really have a community. Um, you don't have the exact skill set. So you get started, you slowly, slowly experiment, which is why I said that my corporate job gave me that safe space to start, you know, like I could start while having that in hand and work on the side as a hobby. So I would just put out a video with no pressure once I let go of the quality stress um, and just put out a video. And then eventually I started making money. So you have to know that there can be no expectation to instantly, like you start your Instagram page tomorrow and you will start making money in the next week. That is probably not going to happen unless, I don't know, you go completely berserky viral and I don't know, Nike approaches you or something like that. That's not, usually that's not the case. So um, giving it that time is important, which is why I think the earlier you start, the better. If you're at a job, it's okay. You don't need to think about it too much. Just get started. And eventually I'm going to show you how you can monetize this because this is honestly one of the best careers once you have figured out a way to monetize it and set it up into an actual business. 
because there are two ways to monetize. One is within your social media and one is the gifts or the byproducts of social media. So nothing happens without that without the entire premise of having a community. my uh, I create videos for my community at no cost, but that is exactly how I earn my money, by having that community that exists, right? So, which is why social media is the main um, channel here. And then the gifts that social media gives you, and you know exactly what I mean in a minute. So through your social media, these are the different ways that you can earn money. So let's go to the biggest one, which is sponsored posts. This for almost, let's say, I would say 80% of the creators is the biggest bucket. Um, and then you go to working with tourism boards, which is basically you go to a destination, you promote that destination and you get paid for it because you are creating content for them. Um, affiliate revenue is basically when say you promote a product that you use on a regular basis. You talk to them, you tell them, hey, I'm ready to, you know, talk about this to my audience, put in that effort because I love your product. So how about every single time you make a sale, I get a percentage of it. That is affi affiliate revenue, revenue. Sponsored posts are basically when a brand pays you money to put their product out there. And now, honestly, it's your, your responsibility as a creator to be mindful of the products that you're working, brands that you're working with. And also, to see how you're putting your messaging out there, right? So I personally only like to use brand, work with brands that I personally use and reach out to them myself and be like, hey, you know what? I'm creating this piece of content. Let's work together on this. That's how sponsored posts work. And you, you as a creator hold the biggest power, which is your distribution, which is the audience, which is what no other, you know, app or company holds they always need to invest in marketing cost in advertisement but as a creator you hold distribution and that is the reason you have all of these revenue sources then you have licensing which is where you can license your product for example i worked with sky bags last year wherein i clicked a couple of pictures while i was traveling with their bags you know when i was in europe and they use that for their social media and I charge them a fee for it. And lastly is fan funding, which is something that isn't a big avenue in India yet, but you know the subscription model on Instagram, you know Pat Patron, you know Buy Me A Coffee, which is basically uh, different avenues where like say, for example, I'm creating an exclusive video and I tell you that I will only release that exclusive video if you know you guys are ready to support my journey and say, let's let pay maybe 100, 200, 300 bucks for it. So that's how fan funding works. And next is the byproducts of social media, which is basically the skills that you learn while you're working on your brand, on your page, and then using those skills for other brands and other pages. So for example, photo and video production, right? You can get really good at that, especially people. I know a lot of friends who are great at cinematic videography. Um, and what ends up happening is even though they don't have lead these insanely large audiences or communities, they start working with the biggest brands like DJI, GoPro, just because they're so good at their one job, which is maybe like taking beautiful videos um, or creating amazing, you know, like photos and like the entire end result of video production. So as long as you have that skill and you can market yourself with that skill, that's amazing. Then you have copywriting, um, writing scripts, great, another big, big avenue, because that is something while AI is here to, you know, ease out a lot of work in terms of maybe writing the captions, maybe writing a couple of small posts, Script writing, which is where you can tell your own story, is a very, very niche thing. So, um, you know, if you're working with a brand that wants to work on a campaign, if they identify you as someone who has a great ability to do that, you can work with them. Third is, I, in my opinion, the most lucrative one, which is services and e-products. Now, if, say, for example, you are a travel creator or a finance creator, what are the services that you can provide with the knowledge that you have, right? One of the things that I am doing right now currently could also be a service. Could um, I could also provide trip planning. I could start doing travel with me, which is, you know, I take my audience for trips with me and I plan that trip. So I charge a fee for it. These are services that could be byproducts of what I currently do. Similarly, if you're like, say, creating finance content, it could be tax planning. It could be managing your personal finance. So these are services um, based on what you currently do. Fitness, 
lots of them. And e-products are basically selling um, digital products, right? So um, could be guides, could be even uh, recordings of your courses. So building a course online, um, it could be so many things. So, so I'm stuck again, sorry. Yeah, all of these are basically great ways to monetize and use your distribution to the best of its ability. And lastly, there's speaking, teaching, and consulting. I'm not going to go too deep into it. It's quite um, understandable that, say, someone invites you to speak at an event and you get paid for it. It's not a very big chunk of, like, you know, it can't be one of your main sources of revenue. But again, it's a byproduct. So having different streams of income becomes more and more important. And lastly, since we were talking about the entire affiliate revenue, I want to take you through a very simple way that you could start out right now if any of you over here are already creators, right, or have an audience, which is signing up with Safety Wings affiliate program. Um, so it's a great fab affiliate program that I personally feel it's a great way to make money in a very, very passive way. Um, so as Sam already introduced Safety Wing to you, they have this uh, product called Digital Nomad Insurance. And now the thing is the Nomad Insurance. Um, as a travel creator or as someone who travels regularly, the most important thing all of us need is a travel insurance while we travel to different countries. Now, how do you make that a very organic offering to your audience is exactly what this is right so this is kind of a way that you can probably even test it out and learn by signing up for their affiliate program so this is this basically costs you nothing you sign up register yourself and then promote this to your own audience you show your audience um, how they can benefit from a travel insurance state out the reasons why they should get it you know uh, you're in another country you get injured the healthcare is insanely expensive but if you've invested in a travel insurance beforehand you're covered secondly um you know there are a lot of accidents that happen all the time when you're traveling that could just be a mishap or you fall sick a travel insurance covers you so marketing that to your own audience and then after that every single time they buy it you get 10 percent of the fee is just a fab way of you earning money. So these are the three very simple steps of doing that, right? So um, you have a quick sign up, then you earn 10% of the fee on, per, of the, on the purchase that you generate by sharing your link, which is trackable. And then you can simply track your referrals. This is a great way that I personally earn money uh, with while working with Safety Wing, while working with other brands. And I would highly, highly recommend that you guys also sign up for this and try it out for yourself because this doesn't cost you anything, but would teach you the art of sales, which is, I think, the biggest skill that I've acquired as a content creator, right? And then that's it. Um, my messaging definitely has always been, as you guys know, that don't just travel, travel more, which is travel with love, kindness, and um, always seek experiences over material things. So we'll open the floor to a couple of questions that Sam can take up. And um, yeah, it's been so fun. Amazing. Thank you so much. Do you need a sip of water now? I know that was almost a full hour of amazing content. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so we are at time, but I'm going to sneak in a few questions anyway, and we are recording this for anyone who really has to leave. Thank you for all who are still here. There are so many questions in the Q&A. So I was looking for some themes and a couple themes that came up was definitely it's very clear that you now own your camera presence, right? You so comfortable turning that selfie camera on and being the star literally of your content. What advice do you have for someone who needs to get over that camera fear that that's actually preventing them from creating the type of content that they know they need to be creating? I love that. And um, personally, sometimes I go back and watch my own videos and my brother and I laugh at that them together. <laughs> because I'm so awkward and barely audible but the thing is I think it goes back to exactly what I said which is that I didn't focus on just the quality as the primary you know uh, benchmark of the video but I thought you know let me just put this out at times it was just out of frustration because I wasn't able to get it right and I was like you know what I've already invested two hours of my time into this let me just put this out there so as you practice you get better but I would also recommend that 
in general, you start getting comfortable with recording yourself more often. So maybe um, you're at work and you get 10 minutes off. Just put your camera in front of you and talk about how your day just went. Like a vlog for yourself. You don't need to put it out there. But as you speak to it, you'll start realizing how you're communicating your idea, where the ums and ahs are coming in too much. Um, maybe you're being too repetitive. And these are the things you'll start taking back every single time. So you don't even need to put that out, but it's just a way for you to get comfortable with looking at yourself in the camera. And a lot of times I have to say that it's not the selfie camera, it's the back camera that I use to film myself. So I'm not even looking at myself when I do that. Um, so just keep trying it out. And I would, like I said, do some casual vlogs while you're just sitting at home. And that would definitely help out a lot. Okay, yeah, repetition builds confidence. Great advice. So I think on the other side of that, right, is you now are getting so comfortable creating content and you have some momentum and you're really understanding the emotional side is, is now taken care of. And now it's about using trends and hashtags and researching what's popular and everything from popular travel destinations to different video trends. And you're thinking like, okay, well, I know this is popular. So that's why I'm going to create it. But then you don't want to like lose yourself in that pursuit of creating popular content. So what advice do you have for someone finding that balance and, and staying true to their own style? That's a very good question again. So personally, I feel like, which is why exact, which is why I didn't bring out the video where I was talking about, sorry, the slide where I was talking about knowing exactly what your audience wants before. I think first, primarily is how to how do you let your personality shine through right so and also have an opinion it doesn't matter like I recently made a video on the fact that according to me Bali is overrated and that's my opinion and it's okay I can put that out there um, that's the reason why I'm a creator and I can't be afraid that as I grow I start losing my voice and my opinion so you really need to think about that that you know when you probably had 20,000 people following you you might have been more honest more vulnerable but as you have a growing audience you might start feeling more conscious and you kind of want to grow that more and more and build on that so thinking about how you can still stay authentic uh, without you know, and while while I, I totally agree that you for the numbers, you still need to chase, like you said, those popular trends or popular destinations. But how can you still make that your own thing, make it your own style? And I personally feel that um, I don't really only travel to, let's say, the popular destinations or don't do just like, say, the basic things that one would do there. Um, and I know that I don't pull in that audience either that maybe wants to do that, which is OK with me, because that means that the community that I'm growing it, basically resonates with the ideas that I'm putting out there and they're going to stay for the next like you know two or three years with me as long as I'm on the platform they're with me which is I think the most important thing to think about here because let me just give you a quick example when I get a reel that maybe gets like 10 million views I might get a huge number of following suddenly but eventually you start seeing that those people start leaving because they've come in for just that one viral video that might not even be you. So you don't want that video to go viral. You want a video that's really you to go viral so that you can pull in the audience that resonates with your ideas because that's the only way to think long-term. I love that. That makes so much sense. And that's why you hear people having kind of that follower roller coaster where it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. And so if you're just focusing on the trends, then no one's going to stick around for that. So love that. Thank you. Okay. I know we're almost 10 minutes over. So final question, giving everything you know now about the content space, what it who all the other players are, do you think this is still a good time to get into the world of content creation as a real career, especially if someone hasn't started yet? 100%. Um, even while I was at the summit recently, the one thing that was, that was, it was like an echo was that the future is content creation, right? Because this is our channel of media now. Think about when was the last time you picked up a magazine or watched just general television? I don't even remember the last time I did that because most of your entertainment, most of your infotainment, let's say, comes from 
content and um, we feel more connected uh, following people who you know feel like we that like more like us which is why the relatability aspect is so important so i personally feel like as we have more and more um, things that they keep dividing us and taking us out this is the one place that everyone's able to connect with each other and which is why i personally feel like content creation is just going to boom and definitely this is the right time to get in i was hearing the same the same question that you asked me two years back as well because everyone was just like oh my god this is so saturated but as long as you have your own unique voice because there's only one of you you are good to go <laughs> amazing well thank you so much it sounds like it's still a great time and as we shared earlier we would love for all of you to help to help you monetize your content and create some passive income as an affiliate for safe doing and our nomad insurance program. So we'll share the link again to sign up for that. It's free and we accept anyone to be in part of the program, which is pretty rare. So on that note, thank you so much. You shared so much great information. I know there's a lot more questions that we didn't have a chance to get through, but where's the best place that they should follow you? Is it Instagram, YouTube, all the places? Where should we go to stay in touch? I think Instagram for sure. And also okay. YouTube, since I'm trying to build that and post more long form and I'm, I, I'm always open to feedback. And uh, like Sam said, make sure to check out the link for safety wing, because like I said, I can't emphasize enough on how great it can be to have that passive source of income. And the fact that it's free and like you guys said that you accept everyone because a lot of affiliate programs usually need a huge form, lots of time for acceptance. This is one place where you can literally just start tomorrow. So it's that simple. So take your time, sign up. And um, like I said, any other questions that you may have, you guys always know that you can comment and I'm always here to answer them. Amazing. Thank you so much. On that note, we're going to wrap up here. Goodbye, everybody. Lots of goodbye, goodbye.